were charged him as a sexual assault. So do you know that one of the victims had a rape kit, a, a rape test done on her when she went to the hospital? Yeah. And that your your semen was in her vagina? No, there was no semen. It says your DNA was in her vagina. No. Okay. This hearing only gets worse. He was convicted of... Uh, of, of, of a horrific crime a year after committing it through DNA evidence. It's a Connecticut parole hearing, so you might kind of have the expectations of how things are going to go, but I'll unpack it at the end. With that, let's jump in. Good morning, I'm Fernando Cruz, 49910. This hearing is being conducted in consideration of the parole application for Fernando Cruz, inmate number 4009. Serving a sentence of 13 years in jail, followed by 20 years of special parole for two counts of kidnapping in the second degree. As to today, records reflect the parole eligibility date, September 13, 2023. There is no victim input in this case. There is an offender accountability plan for the offender. It has been reviewed and shows the offender has completed the following programs. He has completed a short term treatment program, voices, and multiple terms to violence. Utilizing the statewide collaborative offender risk evaluation system, the offender's overall score on the RT falls within the low range of risk. Activity. Utilizing the static 99R, the offender's overall score for the sexual offense recidivism falls within the low to moderate range. This is your opportunity to, opportunity to express to the board why you believe you should be granted parole. You may be here. Mm -hmm. I wrote a letter. Um, Go ahead and read it, sir. I regret, I regret the choices that I have made. I understand how my actions, um, I regret my actions affected my victim, even if um, my own family, how my decisions made in anger changed my whole life. My best lessons that I learned this past 10 years is self-control, accountability. I can control my, what I, I can control what happened to me, but I cannot control, I, but I can control what, I could, I could control the way I, I, I react to it. My plan is if I, if I was to get released, is to work, study, so I could eventually start my own um, auto repair business. And what, what will help me stay focused on my goals is my family's, my family, good friends. I will, I have missed 10 years of my children's life. I have a mentor and pastor uh, Davila, Davila who I can turn to when things go hard and I need advice. I know if I was to get released, there is a lot of hard work to do ahead of me, but I, I have spent the last 10 years working hard to prepare myself and better myself to look forward to continue to improve and learn what to to be a productive member of society and a role member to my children to how to show them that even if you make a mistake in life you can take accountability and work to improve your situation that you can change and improve your life 
if you willing to work hard. I want to continue the programs on the outside because they are, they have really helped me grow as a person. And I want to continue to mature, learn and grow. I, I will never come back to this environment of prison. I will, I will never forget where I was, but I will always keep moving forward, never stepping back on the OC, maybe a better man to be a strong, willing father, hardworking survivor will with my Lord Jesus Christ. Good job. Thank you. Thank you for that opening statement, Mr. Cruz. Did you write it yourself or did you get a help doing that? Now, I wrote it myself for this past 10 years. I understand that um, I got to take accountability for everything little, every little mistake that I have done in, in my life. Um, and I got to show my kids that if you do a mistake, you got to take accountability. And grow up and show and show people that you gotta grow up and be mature and show them that if you do a mistake, you gotta show them like okay. I take I take out a kind of belief for that and take take your time, do it, and okay. then when you come when you come out. Don't do it again. Okay. Don't do the same mistake. It sounds good. So what we're going to do is it, we're going to take turn to, turns to ask you questions. Okay. And then when we're done, we'll deliberate. And then we'll let you know what our decision is. So I'm going to ask Mrs. Page to begin with the questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Mr. Cruz, um, I, I hear what you're saying and, and you're uh, trying to set the example for your children, but I would hope um, that your kids don't make decisions that would wind them up in prison. You know, like, I, I mean, dip it in the bud before that, you know, yeah. um, because it looks as if they tried to work with you uh, prior to this offense. And um, it, it didn't, uh, you violated the probation when you had that chance. So I'm glad um, that you have uh, gained some insight from from this period of incarceration. Yeah. And you certainly have participated in the programs that it were would be appropriate or the programs that we would like you to have completed um, prior to coming to before us. I see that you also did um, the, the Officer said that you participated in the sex offender uh, voices and um, alternatives to violence program, but you also did the fatherhood program, right? And you did the CLIP program, and you're working now in the maintenance. So you're a maintenance worker there in the facility. So um, it sounds as if you um, adjusted uh, Mr. Cruz to um, being a complying. Uh, young man there in the facility. So I, I commend you because I know it's not easy. I know you got off to a little a rough start. You got a couple tickets back in 2020, but that was the last time, right? Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about your the offense. Um, you talked about your regret for your actions and your decisions and You've learned that you don't have to, every action doesn't deserve a reaction and you did some things out of anger. Um, however, I did not really hear you hone in on the victims of your cases. What, what how do you feel about them and, and what do you think your actions, the impact that your actions have had on them? It's like, by me selling drugs and, and acting crazy is, that's how I affected my 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 victim. Well, it, I saw that you have two victims, 
And um, I show that in each of them, you kind of coerce them into getting into your your vehicle. I mean, do you have daughters? Yeah, I got daughters. How many daughters of the four children you have? How many? I got one daughter. And, and, I, got and, my little, and I got my little sister. Yeah. I saw that your sister is also supportive. In fact, your mother um, and your pastor and, and, and some of your friends wrote letters on your behalf for support. So you have the love and support in, in your community. So that's a good thing. A lot of people don't have that. So, um, but I, I, I'm asking that because how would you feel if someone, if your daughter was walking to her friend's house and, and someone just grabbed her and, and forced her into their vehicle? I'll be pissed. Right? I'll be right. pissed. And how do you think your daughter would feel? She'd never want to walk alone anywhere ever again, ever. And that's what many women feel. A, a lot yeah. of people, you know, looking behind their backs, always checking to make sure that they're safe. You know, and, that's the fear that you've instilled in these and victims. That, and that's, that's one of my regrets. Yeah. Well, that's something that you need to say, though, because the more that you say it, the less regretful you'll be, you know. Um, and I, I also wrote that you um, do not take responsibility for the sexual assaults and these crimes. Um, Is that still your position? Yeah, because I never touched him as a sexual assault. So do you know that one of the victims had a rape kit, a, a rape test done on her when she went to the hospital? Yeah. And that you're... Your semen was in her vagina? No, don't know semen. It says your DNA was in her vagina. No. Okay. Um, that's what our records indicate. So I'm just curious to know how would your DNA be found on her if you guys didn't engage in sexual contact? It was never uh saying about that okay all right so you so you know that's something that you're going to have to address when you're out in the community too i'm going to look it up now because um i don't want to misstate things on the record but i did specifically write that down um so, right. um so that's something that you will have to address when you're out in the community and yeah. were you required to appear on the sex offender registry or no no. Okay. All right. So um, do you have any qualms with uh, participating in sex offender treatment out in the community? No, they, I, don't, I don't have no problem with it. Okay. And do you know that, um, how do you think you'll handle being perceived as, oh my God, he's a sex offender um, when, you re when you return out to the community? You lost a considerable amount of weight too. Yeah. I'm looking at your picture and I'm oh, just like, it looked a hold little. On. Um, I'm not, I'm not in the sex offender race then. No, I know. I'm saying that when you'll have to participate in sex offender treatment out in the community, and if uh -huh. people un understand that and they know that that's what you're doing, how do you, how do you handle that when you're out in the community? How do you handle um, people saying, oh my God, he's a sex offender. He, he did, you know, he raped this girl or whatever. How? How do you feel about that? How do you handle I'm that? I'm going to handle it like I always do. I'm going to spend, I'm going to... Okay. Okay, thank I'm you. Gonna to, I'm going to have to explain to them what happened and everything. Yeah. Is it, do your children know what you did? Or did yes. you just tell them? Did you tell them the same story that you're telling us that you... No, the mom explained to them what happened. So you you admit that you pulled them into the car. Um, what are the you you admit that one of the females you actually uh, dragged into the car? It was I they they seen it a drag. It was not like a drag. It was a drug transaction that went on, and that's what happened. Okay. So um, do, do they know that you had sex with these people? 
Okay, my parents? Yeah. No. no, no, they don't. Yeah, I think that you need to have that discussion with them. Um, Mr. Cruz, I honestly do um, commend you on your efforts. I really do think that you still have some more work to do, but I really do think that um, you are regretful that you're that you're there. And ten years is no easy, you know, task to be in prison. So, um, and you've taken some programs and stayed out of trouble, and you have twenty years of special parole to follow your sentence. That's a lot of time. How do you think that you'll be able to complete that successfully? Um, with my family support. Yeah, yeah, that's a big part of it too. But I would encourage you also to develop a, a good relationship with your supervising officer because yes, he or she does have the authority to arrest you and bring you back to prison and violate you and all those bad things that you hear about them in that facility. Yeah, but they, and also, no, I, they also are there to help you. They don't want to arrest you. They, I, they want you to be successful. And, and so if you need help, you need to be comfortable enough with your officer to say, listen, I'm struggling. You know, help me. That's what I'm planning to do. I'm planning to, like, if I need help, I'm going to ask them for help. And they, I know they're going to be there for help. Maybe. And that's okay. what my mom was telling me. Yeah. Your mom's a smart lady. All right, I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cruz. Good luck. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Roger. Thank you. Uh, I don't have a lot of questions. I think my colleague asked quite a few, quite a few questions. I, I'm still a little concerned that on some level you're not, you are taking some responsibility around action, but not totally taking all the responsibility on action. In fact, um, the PSI does say that there was a DNA match uh for you and you know i'm having a challenge with that because i think you're you know trying to do better and trying to get better and you've taken some you know pretty good programming since you've been there um but i'm still challenged by the fact that you're not coming to groups with whatever it is and maybe you didn't drag them in maybe you lured them in with the drugs i don't know but whatever it is it, you know something's not kind of matching up here so and i'm having some some concerns with that but i will acknowledge that I will acknowledge that you are, you know. The, yeah, the, the drug the drug problem, yeah, I had, that's the, the, the main concern that I had. Um, yeah, well, yeah, 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 but we still have the, the, we still have the documents that show there was a DNA match in the rape kit. So that's inconclusive, and that's, you know, that's there. But in any case, I think you're doing, you know, I think you're heading in a good direction. Voices, I think, I hope you learned that Voices is about the victims. Because I also didn't hear anything specifically about the victims. I heard you take responsibility for some of your actions. They were more related to your drug dealing and drug issues than, than they were the impact and effect on the two victims of this particular incident. Uh, so I think you need to think a little bit about like what you learned from voices and what you got from it. Um, and kind of, you know, kind of get that straight in your own head and maybe you know, come to the reality of what of what of what really was going on. Uh, I think you need to have a good relapse prevention plan when you leave. You need to kind of really focus in on that because you did have some issue with I think Percocets and ecstasy, I have and some of the drugs. And what else? Morphine. Yeah, or more, uh, I, I know I saw the Percocets, the ecstasy for sure. So you know, you need to work on some of that as well. Uh, but I do wish you the best of luck, Mr. Cruz. And uh, at this moment, I don't have any additional. Things to say, any questions, Madam Chair? Yes. So, um, <clears throat> you know, um, Mr. Cruz, yes, you don't have to be on the sex offender registry because the deal that they made with you was for you to accept the two counts of kidnap with the 20 year special parole. And so that was your reason for not being on the sex offender registry. Uh, I do hear some change, but I do agree with my colleagues that you still need to do some work. I'm not sure if you have totally acknowledged your responsibility in this because you originally denied it and said 
it was drug related. So I think Mr. Cruz, before you can move forward, you really need to acknowledge in full what you did and then, you know, come up with your release plan and how you can do better. Yeah, but you that's are what on the right path. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That my my actions was the drugs that 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 affected everything. Uh, my the drugs um that I was doing uh, um was affected all my my victim affected everything that 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 happened. Uh, and if I wasn't if I wasn't Doing drugs, and if I wasn't selling drugs, uh, I was I wouldn't be here. Uh, I wouldn't. Well, have my yeah. You, well, you know, it it happened already, so you just have to focus on moving forward, which is what I think I hear you uh, starting to do. So, with um, you know, whatever time you have there, that's what you need to focus on. Okay. So we have no further questions, so we're going to deliberate. You can listen, but not say anything. Okay. Mrs. Page. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I um, I appreciate the effort that Mr. Cruz has put forth to kind of get rehabilitate himself. He certainly has made tremendous strides. Um, he's taken the appropriate programming, and um, he does sound as if he has gained some insight um, I, there are several concerns, as we all pointed out in our questions uh, in period, and um, just listening to him. Um, and he, the, the good thing is, is that he continues to have the support in the community. He's not opposed to taking the program in the community, and he understands that he still has um, work to do on himself. With all that said, um, I my vote will be um, to deny Mr. Cruz um, discretionary parole today. He does have 20 years of special parole to follow his sentence, but the nature of this offense, in my opinion, is difficult for me to move past. And I understand that he may check all the right boxes in terms of suitability, but for me, it's the, the nature of this offense um, is the primary reason why I am voting to deny his request. I agree, Mr. Page. Thank you. Madam Chair, I'm in the same place. I, uh, I'm not voting to not be voting for the today for the same thing, basically, the nature of the offense, which on some level he's still not coming to grips with. Um, and that, that concerns me. And also, not a really solid release plan for him around relapse prevention. And there was a need to his own, by his own words, the drugs were very critical in this uh, situation. So um, I will not be voting to support the discretion for all today. Recommend. I do think that Mr. Coons could um, consider, uh, you know, uh, taking, I know he took the SO and the voices and the alternative, but I think he really needs a substance abuse program. So um, my vote would be to deny also. I mean, honestly, Madam Chair, too, I, I can just, I mean, we really didn't hone in on it, but just the impact to the victim. Yeah, I can, oh, take voices. I can only imagine what they're going through. And for this brave lady to come forward after seeing it on the news, you know, I mean, if they were here to speak on their, to advocate, and I'm sure that they've been extended the invitation, um, I, I just, it's, very good. But, but yeah, it, it is. And from what I read, they 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 made their statement and made their comment and they just, you know, did not want to um, you know, pursue anything any further. They just completely wanted to um yeah. not be near anything to do with him. And it was very traumatic for them. So yeah. so you're absolutely right. Um, we have to set special parole, and I have the victims K S and A L and problem sexual behavior treatment, and I have halfway house. 
Um, I didn't know if you, anyone had anything else. Nope, that's, that's all I had. No. That's why I have answered behavior and ovation. And I had nature and circumstances. Yes, that's my reason. Okay. We can have. That's the only reason why I have the diagram here. Yeah. I, I just really think that the substance abuse piece that he's speaking of, he's he's saying that it's like a clutch, in my opinion. I, I don't know, but um the, the him not taking the substance abuse problem is the substance abuse treatment is not my issue. My issue is um the nature. Right, but I think we need we we need to have these two. We don't. I don't think so. I, I, I would have added an adequate release plan just because I don't think he had a strong enough relapse prevention. Plan. Okay. Okay. Yes, I would, I would have that. So, in the case of Fernando Cruz, inmate number 400910, there is a motion to deny discretionary parole for these reasons nature and circumstances of the current offense and an adequate release plan. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor, say aye. Okay, motion. I say aye. Motion carries. Madam Chair, you need to accept the special parole. So we are going to now set um, special parole conditions. I'm looking at the expression on his face, so that's why I hesitated. Do you understand what we just said? Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to set your special parole conditions. Okay. No contact with victims. K S and AL, problem sexual behavior treatment and release to a halfway house. Do I have a second for that? Second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Okay, motion carries. So Mr. Cruz, we wish you the best of luck. Work on a good release plan. Um, what do you mean? I get approval for? No, that's why I asked you. I hesitated before I set your special parole conditions because I saw the look on your face and I asked you if you understood what I had just said. We denied you and I gave you the two reasons. Okay. Nature and circumstances of the current offense and inadequate release plan. Okay. Okay. But oh, I got denied, but I put a plan for my half a house. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. All right. Okay, Thank so you. good luck. Yes. What did we just watch? I, 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 I <laughs> it's the most bizarre thing uh, that I think. I have up here on the screen so we can look at, at, you know, if you're curious what they look like, but that's, that's Paige. And, and Paige literally said right after he just denied what he did after he completely lied about his crime, after he took no accountability for his actions, and after, frankly, he read the most ridiculous opening statement, which they... Uh, like applauded him on he said she said i really think you are regretful it, it was no surprise that what he did <laughs> it's all part of the record police dna evidence links connecticut residents for a 2012 kidnapping and sexual assault He's acting like, oh, nothing happened. I didn't do anything. No way. And as soon as he's done saying that, she's like, I really think you are regretful. What? Like, come on. <laughs> you can't. This is insane. I'm, it's like, I feel like I'm losing my mind. Yes, I know I'm not wearing glasses. My background's different. I, I can't find my glasses. And like, I just, I needed to jump in and do this. 
Fernando Cruz, 28 of New Britain, was taken into custody on Monday and charged with felony sexual assault, first degree kidnapping, second degree threatening after a year long investigation and DNA evidence allegedly implicated him. Police say on December 5th, 2012, Cruz pulled his van up to a woman in New Britain, threatened her at knife point to get inside. She said she was taken to another location where she was sexually assaulted before being placed back in the van and dropped off at the same street where she was initially taken from. Police said that the investigation included physical description for the victim and DNA evidence. With the DNA evidence, this pathetic system that you call, I don't know, Connecticut, is they give him a they give him a deal. They give him a deal, which is absolutely insane. He doesn't need to go on the sex registry. Why? Because he has special parole? Who comes up with this stuff? Seriously. You know, I know Connecticut is all into like whatever, but do you think the residents actually know that there are judges and DAs handing out little sentences when they have DNA? They're holding the royal flush. He will be found guilty no matter what. And they give him a sweetheart deal. It's a 13-year maximum sentence. Maximum. He will get out in 2025. And they had DNA. And then when he gets out, he doesn't need to go in the registry because he has special parole. How does that make any sense? How does that make any sense? Are they saying because, you know, oh, well, he's going to have a parole officer for 20 years. So the parole officer will make sure that he doesn't uh, he doesn't do anything. I still don't, I, but why, why, even if that's the logic, where's the logic in that? Why, why would you not just make him register? Now, mind you too, and, and this is my understanding of this, you wouldn't get it from, from these records because they're just absolutely nuts. But from what Richard sent me, I'm talking about the Connecticut hearing. They, they didn't talk about it. I'm looking at his records now, and I can't screen share it because it has private information. But it's statute 53A71A-1. Two victims, 13 and 15 years old. That's my understanding. And to confirm my understanding, and if I'm wrong, Richard can put it in the comment section. I'll pin it. But here's the legislation, 53A71. This is when a person is guilty of sexual assault in the second degree when such person engages in intercourse with another person. One, such other person is 13 years of age or older, but under 16 years of age. And that's what it says here. It says 13 to 15 years. So my understanding is that this guy is not only a kidnapper, a sexual assault, you know, but they're babies. They're little children. And he doesn't need to register? And he denies any... Well, it, it, the the frustration, um, I don't know if you feel it too, but the idea that they're actually giving him kudos for his hearing and and even like their main focus was you should tell your daughters, you should tell your kids, you should have a, a talk with them and tell them what you did. He, he... Yeah, they're, he's really going to take that advice, even if I don't even know if that that's advice I would say you should get. It just seems like... What? 
Um, but yeah, they're releasing him. He's getting out next year, no matter what. And uh, great job, Connecticut. Doesn't even need to register. You're doing a great job protecting the children. You're doing a great job protecting the people in your state. Now he's got 20 years special parole, so they set the parameters up. He needs to go to his to the halfway house and we'll have the parole officer. And, he, and if he violates, it's not like he's backing 20 years. We've seen it now enough revocation hearings. It violates, they come in, they have a hearing, then they're like, okay, a three-month sanction. Okay, a six-month sanction. Or maybe they'll say, ah, we don't have enough evidence. You get to go home. Scary stuff. I mean, you probably wouldn't believe it if you didn't see it. Thank you, Richard, for the info. I'll put the link in the description, but this is disturbing. Anyways, with that, I'll let you go.